All right, let's continue playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Final episode, final day of the trial. Oops, I don't want to save. February 25, 9.47am, District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. This is the defendant lobby, all right, but there's no defendant. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? And where's Emma, for that matter? It almost seems as if... Something's been happening behind the scenes! Oh, Edgeworth. Knowing you, you've already figured it out. Who the owner of the 777777 ID number is, that is. Well, I have a pretty strong hunch. Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt regarding this ID record. If that number does belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True, not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for a ruling. Five minutes right, and Chief Prosecutor Sky will be found guilty. But she didn't do it! I figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here to hear what you have to say. This is the first time he's ever done something like this. Lana's hiding something, and the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth! <laughs> Everything goes back to the SL9 instant. Don't be stupid, today's the last day of the trial. We don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you! Exclamation! If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. I'll think about it. See you in court, right? This is it. If I'm ever going to find out what the Chief Gun has on her, it's now! February 25, 10am, District Court, courtroom number 9. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally this is when the prosecution puts forth its opening statement. Which mark? But before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. Chief Gantz! Morning folks, how's everyone doing? Hey Aji, been back to the pool yet? <laughs> no, I've been drowning enough as it is in my work. Oh, that's a good one. Don't think I can top that. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, exactly what is this proposal of yours? Lana, that is to say, the defendant, has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. No, we're gonna cross-examine her. <laughs> What's this all about, defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request and I'll be finished. Well then, what is your request? Your Honor, I'd like to put an immediate end to this trial. Ha! Huh. I confess to all charges against me. On February 21 of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman. You know, if something like that happened in a real court, she'd be... convicted. <laughs> Which raises some questions about the court system, right? If somebody, like, confesses to a crime, they immediately get convicted. Like, without a defendant, is like if you, if the defendant refuses to argue, and like to to uh, to uh, what what's it? To plead not guilty, then there's no case. Even if the defendant is lying about guilt, there's still no case to to be made. Which is uh, yeah that that is actually that is actually a problem with the judicial system. <laughs> anyway. Like, you have to find someone else to sue, or you have to find someone else to charge. 
Anyway, on February 21 of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman in the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana! You can't! Your Honor, the defendant's claim does not change the defendant's defense's plea. <laughs> the defendant's claim does not change the defense's plea. <laughs> In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. But Lana, Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney. The prosecution may lack direct evidence against me. But it has sufficiently proven its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. <laughs> that's not that's not good enough. I would like you to render your verdict now if you please. Mm. Well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. Her request is legally valid, although this is an, un an unprecedented situation. Indeed, it appears there's no further need to continue this trial. Edgeworth is gonna object. Even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. This can't be happening. It appears the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. Objection. One moment, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth, the prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond reasonable doubt. <laughs> That's true. Any ruling at this stage would certainly be premature. I mean, <laughs> yes. You can't change your plea halfway through. That's right, she pled not guilty. So, you, you can't. Until they find her guilty, you can't. You can't. You can't charge her. Come now, worthy. I understand this is a difficult time for you. But why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut? Mm. Huh. I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Gantz. Nani! Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes. Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. <laughs> With this sudden confession from the defendant, it's obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal? Mm -hmm. Not everyone operates as you do, Worthy. Mm. I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh, to whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call... Miss Emma Sky. I request the court hears her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm exercising my right to self-representation. Well, you're gonna have to be the one to cross-examine her. <laughs> I don't think we need to con- <laughs> I don't care what you think, Miss Guy. <laughs> the exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes from it. Very well, the courts shall grant the prosecution to record. This is not how real courts work. That's okay with you, right, Chief Gantz? Worthy. You'll live to regret this, mark my words. Well, you won't. You won't live at all, Gantz. Miss Emma's guy, please take the stand. Looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Um, my name is Emma, Emma Sky. My occupation, I'm Lana Sky, and that's not your occupation. That's not your occupation either. You're a student! Your occupation's a student! How hard is that? Being a sister is not an occupation, and your aspirations is also not an occupation. <sighs> Who wrote this? Who wrote this? <laughs> I did just let it go. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark of the Joe Dark killings. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that though. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. 
Mr. Edgeworth, please remember this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. Is an incident that was resolved two years ago really all that relevant? Yes, it most certainly is. <laughs> well, okay then. <laughs> Alrighty. He sure gave in fast. <laughs> now, please testify about what happened to you two years ago. <laughs> The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. Yeah, but you've been you've been dismissed. You're not supposed to be here anymore, Phoenix. Two years ago, I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me off hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me, but I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. The man raised up his knife and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest! Ah, uh, it's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out, I don't remember much. Then, that's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth, what does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? That will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. <laughs> You have the evidence, Phoenix. <laughs> Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. The defense has been dismissed by the defendant. He's not supposed to be here anymore. I was waiting at my sister's office that day. Two years ago, the defendant was a detective at the police department, correct? Yes, she was second in command under then-deputy chief of police, Gant. My sister! She was the best detective ever! Yes, I remember. Deputy Chief Gant and Miss Kai used to be quite the pair. I believe they shared the same office, which is a little bit awkward to be honest, but sure. That's right. I'd always sit at my sister's desk and dream about playing that organ. <laughs> I wanted to play it that day too. The police department and the prosecutor's office held a ceremony that day. Lana promised to take me to dinner after she finished her work. A man came running in and took me hostage. A man! <laughs> yes, Joe Dark. He was a... A serial killer. Not, not a real serial killer, because the real serial killers don't do what he does. Joe Dark was brought in for questioning on the day of that ceremony. You were desperate to get anything on him that would lead to an arrest. When he saw his chance, he fled the room, right? Upon fleeing the room, Dark proceeded to take the elevator. <laughs> there's, no, there's no security in the police station. <laughs> he must have been in a panic because the elevator was going up. Then he ran into Sky and Gant's office. <laughs> the door wasn't locked? There was a lot of noise coming from outside, so I opened up the door to have a look. <laughs> Why are you doing that? <laughs> That's when I saw him. <laughs> you are so stupid. Neil Marshall rescued me. What was the prosecutor doing there? That day, there were two people present during Dark's questioning. Deputy Chief Damon Gant and Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Almost forgot about Gant. Neil Marshall had just received the King of Prosecutors Award. Young and dedicated, he went straight to the questioning room after the ceremony. I assume that would also be why he was the first to run after Dark. When Dark grabbed me, I, I thought I was a, as good as dead. And that's when Prosecutor Marshall came running in. I, I don't clearly remember what happened then, but... But I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. Can you tell us about that? Mr. Marshall jumped on Dark just then. The lights went out. The lights? It was just about this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out. Wait a minute. If it was pitch dark in that room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then, lightning flashed again outside. 
and sudden, that sudden flash left an unforgettable image of the scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective! Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. Hear more. So you spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago. Yes, that's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman about what you saw. Yes, but at the time, at the words just couldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she mentioned that before. Well, Mr. Wright, have you heard enough? Ask about the picture. This picture, the witness drew. I believe it has a very important meaning. But the list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. <laughs> well, it did. Kind of. Witness, would you mind if we added this statement to your testimony? Yes, your honor. I drew a picture of that scene once, but it seems to have been lost. You drew a picture of the scene you witnessed, right? Yes, I wanted to do everything I could to help the investigation. I can still see it now whenever I close my eyes. That's strange. I, look, I took over the case after Prosecutor Marshall died. Yet I never received any picture. Perhaps the witness is mistaken. But I did draw it, I swear. I'm not just imagining it. This picture that Emma drew, that reminds me. I guess I should check the evidence again. Well anyway, let's continue. This scene that imprinted on an image in your mind. Can you please describe it to us? The man. The man raised up his knife and, and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. That must have been a real shock. <laughs> Even now when I close my eyes, I can still see it just as clearly. Tell us, what were you doing at that moment? I believe you testified that Joe Dyke was holding you hostage. When lightning struck and the lights went out, Mr. Marshall jumped on Dark. I was thrown aside and the two began wrestling each other. Passionately. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was watching them. Emma doesn't have any reason to lie, but Lana sure does. I need to get Emma to tell me as much about this as she can. Alright, so we give it a picture. Present! Uh, not that one. It's this one, right? Yeah, it's this one. Present! Mr. Edgeworth! This little girl put all her heart into drawing that picture. And yet you would insist on denying its existence. <laughs> ha! Why are you point just give her the just give him the drawing? Why are you pointing fingers? Hey, I'm not the bad guy. What I'm saying is that as the prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. That may well be. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold! This is the evidence list for the SL9 incident. Please turn it over, Your Honor. Turn it over. Turn it. Ah! What's this? <laughs> um. <laughs> yes, what is that? <laughs> hey, that's it. That's the picture I drew. <laughs> Indeed, two men appear to be wrestling here. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me! Only the prosecutor in charge should have access to that list. Ah. These lists, they're... They're different from each other. Nani! It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists fit together to form one. You can see the marks here where they were torn apart from each other. <laughs> How would you not notice that it's been torn apart? <laughs> it's half a sheet of paper. It's like you take an A4 sheet and you like cut it, tear it in half. 
and like, you don't notice it's only half the A4. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> it's half a shade that you don't, you don't notice. <laughs> so you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence in that case ever reached you. What? What? Order! But Miss Guy, why did you draw your picture on the back of such an important list? Because that's what Detective Goodman handed me in the questioning room, Your Honor. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, a what? Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor! Are you alright, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head. If the evidence list was torn in half, then there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edgeworth's list. Exclamation! Yes, that's quite conceivable. Mr. Edgeworth! It's possible. Let's see! Is something wrong? Do you even have to ask? <laughs> this is too ridiculous. Sorry, Your Honor. There is indeed something drawn on the back of my list. Is that... that thing? <laughs> So good! That's a great plot twist. <laughs> wow! I didn't, I didn't, I didn't look, I didn't see that one coming. That's so good! <laughs> okay, you know what? This is all right. Like I've been complaining this whole time, but. The disc makes up for a substantial portion of it. <laughs> That's that... That thing! <laughs> that thing that was dancing in the evidence room. Clearly, this act of vandalism is the work of a certain chief of detectives. <laughs> I guess he was out of scrap paper. <laughs> <laughs> evidence list restored and updated to the court record. <laughs> list of evidence in the SL9 incident. Half of this list was found in Gant's desk. Very well. Witness! Will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? Huh? Oh, yes sir, your honor. What's wrong with Emma? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna take a real close look at this. <laughs> I can't... I can't see the front of this. Wait, is that really... Is that really graffiti or is that... Did she throw something at him? Does the jar have that profile? I mean, it kind of does. It kind of does have that profile. If you like... It's not, not quite. Not quite, right? Hold on, back. No, no, it's not. Unless it is. Uh, 
Um, it's not really it, is it? Except what's this? Unless there's a bit missing there. Maybe there is a bit missing there. If there's a bit missing there, can I make it look like that? Not really. It's a, it's kind of close though, isn't it? Anyway, let me... Hmm. Alright, what's wrong with Emma? She seemed to be thinking about something when she was looking at the picture. Because we know that the jar got thrown at somebody and knocked someone out. Emma's picture! This is the picture I drew two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright all I could see were shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. To think a flash of lightning could burn such an image into your mind. Thanks to that though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows Joe Dark about to murder prosecutor Neil Marshall. Or... There were two other people. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. This is the picture I drew two years ago. Wait, no, no, back, 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 back. Did you draw this picture right after the incident? Um, I think I drew it two or three days later, uh, huh. At first I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't do anything. During that time, the investigation team was reorganized. Detective Goodman was placed in charge, under the direction of Damon Gans and Lana Sky. Two or three days later, the memory should still have been fresh in her mind. Excuse me, witness. But can you please tell us why this picture is painted all black? The flash of lightning was so bright all I could see were shadows. So at the time you didn't even know it was Mr. Marshall who had come to your rescue? No, I couldn't see him clearly. The lightning was so bright. And I was knocked to the floor. You were knocked to the floor? Dark had a tight grip on me, but when Mr. Marshall jumped on him, I was knocked away. You're assuming it's Marshall. It might not have been Marshall. I turned around, and that's when the lightning flashed. Poor Emma, I'm just glad she wasn't hurt. What happened after the lightning flashed? After that, I must have fainted. You mean, you didn't see the actual murder take place? No, I'm sorry. The flash of lightning only drove off the darkness for a split second, not only that, but the trauma of the situation understandably caused the witness to faint. Do you really need to torture this girl any further? Yes. Nani! Hey, I'm not the bad guy here. Anyway, this picture... This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. Sorry for asking so many times, but are you sure you drew exactly what you saw? Of course, this is the exact scene. It wasn't influenced any way from your talks with the detectives. Are you insinuating we somehow manipulated her memory, Mr. Wright? That's possible, you know. No, no, of course not. I'd better watch out or he might find some way to cut my salary. 
I drew this picture before I heard anything from the detectives. So I don't think anyone's story would have influenced me. Mr. Wright, is there something that's bothering you about this picture? Huh. Oh, well. That's strange. She claims this is exactly the scene that was imprinted in her mind. And yet, there's clearly a contradiction here. Is there? Oh, is it the, the left hand? <laughs> Are we... I didn't mean to. The flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see were shadows. So this guy's holding a knife in his left hand. Is that really not part of the picture? That's part of the picture, right? I can't tell if he's left or right-handed in that picture. Alright, let me... Let me save. And I'm gonna, like, present her with the full picture. Nope. Alright, that's not... <laughs> that's not the full picture. It shows exactly what I saw in that instant. I have no idea what the game wants from me. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. I can ask you about the jar? Yeah, no, I don't know what the game wants from me. I have pressed everything, right? <laughs> No, we don't ask her about the other half of the picture. I didn't mean to do that. What was this? Stabbed in the back. Oh. Stabbed in the back. She said the chest. Okay. Load. Is it the autopsy report? Objection. 
I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this picture the witness drew contains a blatant contradiction. Nani? But I still remember it just like it was yesterday. Mr. Wright, perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out this contradiction for us. What part of this picture contradicts the autopsy report? Uh... <laughs> Wait, which part? Stand in the back? I... wait, which part? <laughs> uh... It's because the drawing stinks. <laughs> I missed the right, how could you? <laughs> wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> what? Stabbed in the back, died from punctured heart and lung, a knife tip it was in the wound. Oh, like there's more. Okay, wait a minute. Date and time of death. 7 p.m., 7.30 p.m. Single stab wound piercing heart and lung. That doesn't say from the back. <laughs> Uh, let me, uh, load the game again. <laughs> I don't know what the game wants from me. Um, presents...